Advent. We await the coming of our Lord Jesus. I'm excited. I don't know about you. <laughs> One of the things I love best about Christmas is the few weeks that we're living towards it, when everybody gets ready. I don't know about you. Have you got any lights up yet? Anybody? Yeah, we do some. <laughs> there's the lights, there's the smell of mulled vine, there's the candles, there's the trees, there's an advent calendar maybe. I was walking in the shop the other day and there was this little lad with his granddad just looking at all the stuff around the shop and he was just going, oh, granddad, look at this. And it's just the sheer wonder in his face, in his voice. It's just lovely to hear. I had a bit of that sense of wonder when I first set my own Christmas tree up. Now, I was 22 at the time. Um, and for you to understand sort of the significance of this story, um, I was in a very strict Christian family, grew up in a very strict Christian family. And so um, Christmas was as stripped back as you could possibly get. Right? There's no decorations, no lights, certainly no Christmas tree. Um, because all that takes away your attention from Jesus. Um, so then I agreed to have my first ever Christmas tree in my classroom when I was teaching my first year. I think if they'd known about it, they'd pr pretty much think I'd become pagan or something. Um, so anyway, so I set this lovely Christmas tree up and I put the lights around it and the decorations on it and the children had gone home and I sat in my classroom waiting until it had gone dark looking at this amazing Christmas day. Oh, isn't it nice, the smell and everything? Great. Well, what I wasn't so good at was to make sure that it was stable. <laughs> yeah. So I went home, and little did I know that night that disaster would struck. And the next morning, you guessed it, right? It had fallen off. <laughs> and the baubles were everywhere, the decorations were everywhere. It was just a mess in the classroom. Ah, uh, Okay. God, I think I get the message. I sent, I looked at that tree as if that was the center of Christmas, and it, of course, is not. Maybe my lovely family wasn't so wrong after all. Now, today I'd like to talk to you about that sense of wonder. And I think back myself, how many Christmases have I had? Do I still have that sense of wonder? You know, when you hear the story about Jesus' birth again and again, how about you? When did you last have that real sense of wonder at what God has done for you? Have you ever had it? Have you had it and maybe you've lost it? And anyway, what do we actually mean when we talk about a sense of wonder? I thought I'd just Google it, like you do. And this is what came up. It's a feeling of awakening or awe by an expansion of one's awareness of what is possible. i just read that again. It's a feeling of awakening or awe by an expansion of one's awareness of what is possible. Now, today's passage is from Luke, the first chapter of Luke, and you will see that same sense of wonder in the two women we are meeting in the story. So just to put the story into context before we read it, the angel Gabriel had been to, to visit Zachariah in the temple and told him his wife was going to have a son who would be the forerunner of the Messiah. And then the angel visited Mary in Nazareth and told her she was going to become pregnant in a supernatural way and have a son, the Messiah himself. He also told her that Elizabeth was then six months pregnant. So that's where our passage starts. So if you have a Bible, I invite you to open it up. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. At that time... Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. 
So here we see how Mary decided to travel, first of all. So she would have gone from Nazareth all the way over to the hillside of Judea, which was probably around 70 to 100 miles. Now, take, take into account she was only very young. It would have been a mountainous area. It would have taken her a good few days to do that. So that's actually really courageous to do that. And then it says she traveled with haste. She had something to share, and she had somebody to share it with, somebody who would understand. So she can't wait. In the message translation, it actually says, Mary didn't waste a minute. She couldn't wait to share this great news with a family member who would actually understand what she was talking about. Point in case, women like to chat. Right? So after days of traveling, Mary arrives at Elizabeth's. And let's see what happens. And I'm just reading it from the message translation again. It says, Mary greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. That's not just a little noise, is it? <laughs> see, I love this picture. It just shows you, doesn't it, how clearly excited and full of wonder those two women were. What a moment of wonder. Mary had not even said anything yet. She just basically said hello. And Elizabeth had this amazing response to this greeting. You know, John, the baby in Elizabeth's womb, was a herald for the king to come. And his job already started before he was even born. He was the first person to recognize the Messiah, and he leaps. Now, that is more than just what you expect from being pregnant, a baby rolling over or, you know, making a bit of a movement in your tummy. That's, that's supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. That's proper Holy Spirit all over. Elizabeth starts to sing, Blessed are you and the fruit of your womb. Who am I that the mother of my Lord comes to me? What an encouragement to Mary that Elizabeth recognized that this baby is going to be her Lord. What a sense of awe and wonder must have filled Mary when she heard Elizabeth's response. See, I wonder about us. Do we believe God's words? Elizabeth and Mary would have known so very little about what was going to happen and yet we have the full scripture. When were you last so filled with that sense of wonder that you leaped up for joy and you were filled with the Holy Spirit? Now that same spirit then comes upon Mary, that's just after our reading, and what is her response? Do you know? What does Mary do? She sings. You know, it strikes me that both these women's response is not one of, oh, you know, I found it so hard to believe, or didn't you think it was really weird when you first had that visit from the angel, or did you see the faces of the people when you told them about it? Mm -mm. None of that. The first thing they did was sing God's praises. They couldn't help themselves. They were filled with that sense of wonder something that's well beyond what's possible. What did it say again, that explanation? It's an expansion of one's awareness of what's possible. Well, that was certainly what both Mary and Elizabeth experienced. So all this happened before Jesus was even born. And Mary then watched him grow over the years, see him start his ministry, and how her heart must have ached when she then saw him on the cross. Even one of the Roman soldiers caught that same sense of wonder when he cried out, surely he was the son of God. So thinking about Jesus, doing that for us, for people who didn't even ask for him, who didn't deserve anything. You know, he suffered and died alone so that I may have eternal life. I love the words of this beautiful hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean. 
Oh, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. And you know, by all means, go enjoy the lights and the trees. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but let it not take away from Jesus himself. Huh? At this amazing time, just be filled with that sense of wonder. Can I invite you to stand? Is that all right? I just wonder if you are happy to, and you would like to be filled with that sense of wonder. Today, for the first time, maybe for a new time, you have never had it before. Let's stretch out to God, shall we? Now, Lord, thank you that you give us the chance to just stop and think. To think about your story. To think about the wonder of salvation. The wonder of you, Jesus, coming to this earth. And I just pray, Lord, here we are, with outstretched hands. Would you fill us again with that sense of wonder? Holy Spirit, help us to have Jesus at the center this Christmas time. Show us, Lord, how amazing and wonderful you are. We thank you for sending your son into the world. Help us to stand in awe of it this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.